Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Whenever you're watching worship today, we're glad that you're here with us. We are grateful to, for, to the Lord for you. Thanks for joining us today. Taking us high 
you stepped into time You laid down your life to save us And you took on our shame On the cross it was laid And I dig in the fire And we go from glory to glory to glory We'll never be the same We'll never be the same And you take us higher and higher and higher And we'll forever change Forever change Cause you took on Ray So not even death can shake us Oh, the victor's won And heaven's gone And now taking us higher We go from glory to glory to glory We'll never be the same We'll never be the same Cause you take us higher and higher Forever change Oh, we go from glory to glory to glory We'll never be the same Never be the same Yeah, you take us higher and higher and higher And we'll forever change Forever change One more time We go from glory to glory to glory We'll never be the same, we'll never be the same Oh, and you take us higher and higher and higher We'll forever change, we'll forever change We'll never be the same, we'll never be the same Cause we'll forever change, forever change Yeah. 
so amazing yeah. and covers See the Lord and his train build the temple. See the Lord, he is high and lifted up. I see the Lord. joining this morning. God bless you today and happy Mother's Day. Well, happy Mother's Day. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we want to wish a very happy Mother's Day to all of our moms as well as our single dads. We know that you do double duty, so we want to say happy, happy Mother's Day to you as well. And um, we just hope that you have a great day with your families or whatever it is that you're doing today. Uh, we want to remind you again of all the things that we have going on in order to stay connected together. Um, we have Tuesday morning on Facebook Live at 10 a.m. I do a Facebook Live thing. And then Pastor once a week does a question and answer Zoom call. So watch Facebook for information about that because it changes and, and um, they will give you all the instructions that you need to do that. And then the Thrive Youth Group with Kevin and Chad, they're posting um, sermons and David's doing some music stuff. And then Sean is doing Sunday school stuff. All of that goes on there. And then of course the sermons and the worship are also posted. And pretty much everything is on our Facebook page or you can also go to our website 
website and um, go to YouTube and search us. They're, they're all linked together. And so we, um, lots of places, lots of ways that you can stay connected. And we hope that you're doing that. We hope that you're, that you're watching all the different things so that um, you can stay connected. Another way that we would love for you to stay connected is by our curbside service. It's a drive through on Sunday mornings. The staff is out in front and we've got from 8.30 to 10 every Sunday morning, we've got donuts and we've got all kinds of stuff. Um, you can get your hand out so you can, uh, hopefully you have it now. Anyway, um, that'll be going until we're meeting together again. So that's a great way to stay connected. And that's also a great way you can drop off your offering. Um, you can do offerings through the app. If you have the Foothills app, it's got an icon there that you can click on that and give. You can go to our website and give. Um, you can mail it in. So there's all kinds of ways that you can give. And we so, we're so grateful and we appreciate so much everybody who is continuing to support the church. We appreciate that. And I know that God will bless you. So let's pray for the offerings real quick. Heavenly Father, we just worship you and we know that you care for us in every way, in every manner, no matter what's going on in our lives or the challenges that we're facing. Lord, we know that you care for us and that you will bless these offerings and you are faithful to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, for scripture reading this morning, Elena Ratliff is gonna be reading scripture. Today I'm gonna be reading from 1 Kings 17, 15 through 16. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Thanks, Lainey. Great job. And now we have a video for your enjoyment. Well, moms, today is your day. It's a day to say thank you for loving us, caring for us, and guiding us. It's a day to recognize all you do and all you are to us. You're perfect, wonderful, amazing children. Thanks for all the early mornings and for taking care of the things we take for granted. Thanks for never giving up on us, even when we stress you out. Thanks for making sure we have what we need and for giving us your heart even when you're sick and tired. Thanks for working hard even when we're a handful and for loving us unconditionally when our attitude is anything but lovable. You're our everything, Mom, and we'd be a mess without you. Today, we thank God for the wonderful gift of you. Happy Mother's Day. Okay, that was great. Now, here's Pastor Mark. Well, happy Mother's Day. All of you uh, mothers out there, we want to thank you for just loving, loving your kids and loving your families and all that you do. You do so much and uh, uh, we're so appreciative of our mothers. I'd like to just give a quick shout out, a personal uh, shout out to my mother who's at home in uh, Grand Junction, Colorado and, and uh, watching uh, the message as she does. And uh, mother, I'd love to tell you, I love you first of all. And second of all, I want to thank you for, um, for raising me and uh, doing the best you could with what you had to work with. Uh, I also want to thank you for, uh, for opening up my mind to the scripture. Uh, the Lord really used you, Mom, to, to help me understand the Lord and both you and, and Dad. Uh, love, loving the Lord and loving each other. You're a great role model, a great example, and I want to thank you for being my mom and, uh, and for all that you've done. So, Mom, love you. Thank you. And also, I want to shout out to all you single dads that uh, you, you're, you're fulfilling the role of a mother as well in, in the care and the love and, and uh, the instruction of your children. So, uh, thank you. Um, we're going to talk about a mother today, a mother, a, her son, and a prophet. Before we do that, though, let's, let's uh, close, our, uh, close our eyes, bow our heads, and let's, let's have a quick word uh, of prayer to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for mothers on this Mother's Day. And that, that all that, that a mother embodies, all the love and all the goodness and all the, all the caring, all comes from you, God. And um, we thank you that, that only you, God, only you could come up with an idea of a mother. And, uh, and inspire a mother. And, and so, Father, on this Mother's Day, we also want to say a happy Father's Day to you. 
And Lord, uh, we pray that, that this message would go down well, that we, would, that we would have eyes to see and ears to hear uh, what the Spirit is saying to the churches and to our church. And Lord, I pray that you use me to speak your words clearly and, uh, and that, that uh, is understandable and discernible. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to talk to you today about this widow from Zarephath. But before we do that, see, Israel is in a mess. And, and this widow that we're going to talk about today was a part of that. And the prophet that we're going to talk about today was a part of that. This, this nation that was in turmoil, this nation that was in chaos because... 60 years or so after the death of Solomon, the son of David, uh, the nation of Israel has walked away from the Lord. Sound familiar? Our nation was founded on such godly principles. And in just uh, probably the last 60, 70 years or so, we have, we have made uh, a turn away from God in so many sectors in, uh, of our society. And this is what's happened in Israel. And Israel had become a wicked nation. And part of the reason was the king that was in at the time, and that was Ahab. And, 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 but the downward slide had started from Solomon as in, towards his, the end of his life, he stopped following the Lord too. The wisest man, he stopped following the Lord and, he, and his heart got turned away from God and he started worshiping other gods. And then that started all of this mess that, that then God raised up this prophet to go and address Ahab and his wife Jezebel for their wickedness and the wickedness of Israel. And, and one of the things that Elijah was called upon by the Lord to do was to declare a drought, a famine in the land. And so for about three years now, since Elijah had made this, this prophecy, there had been no rain. Can you imagine in Israel, no rain for three years and crops failing, food hard to come by, people were starving. It was, it was a rough time. And there was this widow in Zarephath that God sent Elijah to. And we're going to talk about her today. I just want to show you the scripture that kind of launched this message. Um, the Bible just simply says here in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 15, she, being the widow at Zarephath, went away and did as Elijah had told her. And as I was reading this several weeks ago, um, as I do most every morning when I read the scriptures, I read the scriptures every morning, and most every morning I'm saying to the Lord, God, is there something you want to say to me? Is there something you want to show me? And so, so I'm looking, as I'm reading, I'm looking, I have, I have a notebook with me and I write scriptures down as, as it comes off the page. And as I was reading this, this story, this wonderful story, this, this, these words just came off the page. She went away and did. And I just thought about that and I thought, you know what? She was a ditter. I want to be a ditter. That's what went through my head. I want to be a ditter. And so to come through hard times, we must be a ditter. Now, I know some of you are thinking, I think pastor's been sheltering in place a little too long. I think he's going a little bit crazy. And you may be right. I may be crazy, but it just may be a lunatic you're looking for. Uh, thanks to Billy Joel and then, then later Garth Brooks, if you're, if you're familiar with them. But we have to be a ditter. Now, I know ditter's not a word, but you're probably going to remember it. And what I hope and pray more than you remember it is that you become a ditter as this woman was. First Kings chapter 17, verse 8 and 9. So now Elijah has just prophesied again against Ahab and Jezebel. And then God tells Elijah, the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath, which was this town of Sidon, and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. There's a famine though. But God had a plan. And so, in the midst of this terrible famine, Elijah finds this helpless woman, this helpless mother, and her son. And let me just say something about helplessness. Helplessness is, is, um, uh, is a, there, there's, there's this psychological term. Uh, it's used in psychology. It's called learned helplessness. And learned helplessness uh, is a result of someone who's been beat down and beat down and beat down and beat down and beat down so much that they feel they have no, they have no ability to change their situation. And we're going to see in the, wo the words of this woman in just a few minutes that she had felt beat down 
First of all, she's a widow, so she's lost her husband. And now she's trying to provide for her son and during a time when there's famine. And you may feel during this time of, in a sense, famine. We can't, not all of us can work right now. And people are struggling financially and they're struggling in so many areas of their life that there's this feeling of famine, which for this woman brought about this feeling of helplessness, this learned helplessness. She'd been beat down so much. Oftentimes when we are helpless and, and we've learned helplessness, a sense of worthlessness happens. When a sense of worthlessness happens from a sense of helplessness, right? We get, we get ourselves in this third situation that is very dangerous. And this is where I wanna, I wanna encourage you today. Um, if you're feeling helpless, God is your only answer. God is your only, not a state governor, not a politician, not a, a congressman or a senator, not a bailout check. God is your only answer. Otherwise, we become hopeless. And hopelessness is so dangerous. But hopelessness comes from this learned helplessness. And this woman is, because of her helplessness, has become hopeless. And she's basically given up. But God, God had a, a plan. He was prepared to save this widow and her son, but only if. Now that seems unfair to some people. They think, well, what's wrong with God? You're going to save her only if? You know, God sets the rules. God says, I'll take care of you, but he's saying, you've got to attend to me. I love the scripture in, uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. But we, it, we have to seek him for all those things to be added to us as well. And so God is prepared to save them, but only if they would do what the prophet had told her. What if, what if, he said, what if she said no? And here's the, here's the story. See, but let, me, let me just say this. God commands, and we agree. It's not the other way around. We don't command God and he agrees with us. He commands us. We agree with him. It, it always works that way. And that bugs arrogant man. That, that, really, that really angers arrogant man because arrogant man wants to command to God and have God agree with them. God doesn't agree with us. We agree with him. He's God. And so God commanded Elijah and he also commanded this widow. And so there had to be agreement on their part. So Elijah goes to Zarephath and he sees this widow and she's gathering sticks and, and to, to go and build a fire. And he said, bring me, please, a piece of bread. She replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour. Get that visual in your mind, a handful of flour and a little oil in a jug. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid first. Now this is, you got, this took a lot of courage for Elijah as well as this woman. Because after hearing her say, I don't have anything, you'd think he'd have said to the Lord, you know, God, hey, she doesn't have anything. Uh, how, how uh, I'll, I'll go somewhere else for food. No, no, God said, you go to her. And he says, you first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have. For this is what the Lord says. What courage of, of Elijah, the God of Israel. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. In other words, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. So Elijah agrees with God's word as well. And, you know, I struggle with this sometimes because, you know, as a pastor of a church, we operate based off the giving of people. And so without givers, we don't have a church for long. And so it's hard sometimes for me, though, to ask people to give. But I'd, rather than asking you to give, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to thank you for giving to our church. I would like to thank you for supplying the needs of our church so that our staff and our, and our facility can be maintained during this time and for coming on July 7th, 30 years. Joni and I have been here pastoring the Foothills Church. 
the people of this church through the word of the Lord have supplied us uh, and, and supplied for this church in this community. And I, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for your continued support. And so uh, Elijah agrees with the word and asks the widow for food. And she says the word only, only, only. There's that helplessness. Helplessness is, I, 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 I only have this. I, I don't have more. I don't have enough. And she says, I only have enough just to eat it. And then she says this, we're, I'm going to make this, this little handful of flour. We're going to make a, a, some bread. And my son and I are going to eat it. And then we're going to die. That's what she says. That's the, whole, the, the helplessness, the only, not enough, and the hopelessness. We're going to eat it and die. But he tells her, don't be afraid. Oh, let me tell you. If you hear anything this morning, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And the, the, the feelings of fear that come over all of us. There's times that I'm like a little bit afraid over some of the things I'm hearing, some of the things I'm seeing. And then what we hear about these murder uh, uh, hornets. I mean, really? Anything else? <laughs> right? And it's, it can cause fear. But he says to her, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Do what God says and you'll always have enough. Do what God says and you'll always have enough. Fear freezes us though, boy. It, it, and it keeps us in an only state of mind, this helpless state of mind. That's what fear does. And so his words to her, don't be afraid. But if we will obey God's word for us, if you obey God's word, I want to promise you this, and don't, this is not my word, this is God's word. If we obey him, if we follow him, we will always, always have enough. We'll always have, we may not, listen, you can cheat, you can rob, you can steal, you can do your own thing, you can go your own way, and you might have more than you'd ever want. And you might be able to, through, through deceptive means, acquire a lot of money or, or something, but would it ever be enough? See, when you follow the Lord, even a little is enough. Even a little is enough when you follow God. So she went away, and this is that scripture again, and did as Elijah told her. Having very little, she acted. She acted on God's word. And you know what? God took care of her. Because God, God is always looking for a partner. God, is, God doesn't play solitaire. He's always looking for a partner. He wants to join. He wants us to join. He wants to join us. He wants to work with us. He wants to work through us. He wants to work for us. He wants to work with us. He wants to work in us. And so, but we have to work with him. We have to partner with him. And so here's this poor widow, this helpless woman who's on the verge of absolute hopelessness, partnering with the word of the Lord partnering with what God said, joining herself to God, and he took care of her. If we trust God, even in this famine, quote unquote, this famine that we're in, let me tell you, he'll take care of us too. I don't know how he's going to do it. I, I don't know how, when we've been sheltering in place, and some people have been, been without work for a couple months, I don't know how we're going to get through this but God's going to get us through this if we follow him because he's got a plan. None of this has taken God by surprise. But it requires courage to act out of fear. And that's the only way to get through fear is to act our way out of it, to step forward and to follow God. We act out of fear, away from fear. So she went and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food. Listen to this. There was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the flour, the jar of flour was not used up, was not used up. And the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping. You think God's going to break his word? You think God would ever break his word to anyone? Psalms chapter 138 verse 2. God is exalted above all things, his name and his word. And so God is not going to violate his word. God said something and God will do that. He will fulfill what he speaks. And so all this happened in keeping with the word the Lord spoke by Elijah. 
To come through, we must be a ditter. To come through, we must be a giver. And so, uh, sometime later in this story, Elijah is now staying with the widow of Zarephath. And God is supplying for this family. Uh, he's supplying for the widow and, and her son. And he's supplying for Elijah. Every day, right, there's oil. Every day, there's flour. Every day, they have food, even though there's a famine. And so sometime later, though, the story continues. The son of this woman became ill. And he grew worse and worse. It's like, really? More? 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 Finally stopped breathing. The Bible says that he died. She said to Elijah, what, did, what do you have against me? Wow. Isn't it amazing? I mean, when something bad goes, goes, happens, when something goes wrong, we have this tendency to blame God. We have this tendency to get mad at God. We have this tendency to turn on, on people that, that have helped us. And she says, what do, you, what do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill me? You see, we also have this tendency when bad things happen to think that it's because we're under some curse. That, that God's mad at us because of our sin. And that's not what's going on. That's not what's going on here. God wanted to do something even greater than supplying food for them, which is, to God, is no big deal. Now, one would think, though, that after God had provided for this woman, this, this widow and her son, all this time, all this time, every day, they, every day they saw a miracle. Every meal they saw a miracle. There's flour. There's more oil. You know, at, at, hey, let's have, let's have dinner. There's more flour. There's more oil. The next morning they got up. Hey, there's more flour. There's more oil. And they just, this kept going on and on and on and on. Miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And you'd think that, 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 that they would have just complete trust in God now. Just God can do anything they would think. You think of all that God's done for us as a nation, all God's done for us as a, as a people, all God has done for us personally. For years upon years upon years upon years and, 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 and decades, God has supplied for my life and God has taken care of me. And yet when something bad happens, I have this tendency to go, God, what do you have against me? And it's like, wait a minute, you've been seeing miracle after miracle after miracle for, for, for years. And now you doubt me? Isn't that like us though? We doubt when faced with new tragedy. God brings us through one tragedy. And then a new one comes and we, and, and we lose all faith in him again. And it's just, it's just our tendency as people. And it was certainly her tendency. Even though she's seeing this miracle upon miracle, new tragedy comes. And listen, it's a bad one. I mean, we're talking death now. But if we can trust God with this, why not with that? If you trusted God, and if you think right now, of all that God has brought you through, if God could do that, and can he take care of this as well? <laughs> you trust God with your sins to forgive you. You trust God to protect you. You trust God with your health. Can't you trust God in these trying times financially? If you can trust him with this, you can trust him with that. Because God is completely trustworthy in everything and with everything that pertains to you. So Elijah says to the woman, give me your son. Give me your son. But he's dead. What's the point now? There's always a point. There's always a point to following God's word. You're never too late. And that's part of the thing that I see here is, is it's never too late. You might think, well, it's over now. Son's dead. It's never too late. The simple answer to anything dying, if your finances are dying right now because of the virus, you've got to give it to God. If your marriage is dying because of this problem or that problem, you've got to give your marriage to God. If there's, if there's death happening in your business, you've got to give it to God. 
the author of life. How do you give it to God? Surrender, prayer. You declare it. God, I give you this. I, I, as, as Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, he says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. You cast your cares on the Lord by saying, God, I give this to you. I can't, I can't carry this anymore. I can't handle this anymore. I, I don't want to feel this helplessness. I don't want hopelessness to come. And so, Lord, this is dying or dead. And so, God, I give it to you to bring and breathe life into this situation. But if we cling to it ourselves, and that's, see, that can be the tendency when, when tragedy happens. We can get angry. We can get angry with God. We can get angry just as she was kind of blaming the prophet. I mean, what, what do you have against me, right? And it's this, this, out of anger, we cling to stuff instead of, whoa, 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 wait, wait. God, you've taken care of this. You can take, take care of this as well. And so, God, I, I, I want to release this to you because I can't handle it myself. I can't take care of it. You can't cling to it. If it's dying, you got to give it. you got to give it to the Lord. See, rather than being like the Red Sea, if we cling to it and we don't give it to the Lord, whatever we cling to and whatever we refuse to give to the Lord, we become like the Dead Sea. These two seas that are in, in uh, uh, the Middle East, the Red Sea is one of the most prolific um, and, and um, dynamic seas. It teems with life. The Dead Sea, stagnant. Here's the difference. Both of them have, have water flowing into them. The Red Sea has water flowing out of it. So there is a continual flow happening in the Red Sea. The Dead Sea has nothing that flows. No water flows out of the Dead Sea. Water flows into it, stagnates, and dies. The, the sea's dead. Givers are teeming with life. That's the power of giving. When, when we're able to give things to the Lord, He breathes life into it, and we're teeming with life ourselves. We become like the Red Sea, and then flow, flow happens from that. So what does Elijah do? He says to the woman, give me your son, and he takes the son. And <laughs> one of the things, it's, uh, it's in this 1 Kings 17, um, he says, God, did you bring this tragedy on this woman? God, did you do this? And he said, oh, Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. And the Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him. And then he took the boy, and he gave the son back to his mother, and his family was reunited and restored. And that's my prayer today for you, is that, is that, that you would be a ditter, that you would be one who did what God said and that you would be a giver, that you would give to the Lord that which is dying, that you would give to the Lord that which you're struggling with, that you would give to the Lord that which you're, which you're worried about, that, that which you're panicked over or, or fearful about, that you would give those things to the Lord, that you'd be a ditter and a giver, and, then, and that you would see God take care of you, provide for you, and also restore your family and restore your, your businesses and restore your jobs. Let's bow our heads. Father, I love you and I thank you for mothers like this widow at Zarephath who was an obeyer of you, who followed you, who did what was commanded and who also gave. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much for taking care of us. And we pray you continue to take care of us as we, as we follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Mother's Day.